night, Neil Patrick Harris hosts television's most intelligent game show. Come and join us. Where knowing a little about a lot can win you one million dollars. I love it. Eight ordinary people, all with extraordinary knowledge. You are on fire. Compete to survive elimination after elimination. I don't think you're gonna get it. It's a game of speed. Fast and furious. Strategy. I think I need to play this one. And smarts. This is worth $100,000. In the Pledge of Allegiance, what's the sixth word of the US states that border Mexico? The baseball jersey buried under Yankee Stadium. Which fast food chain? Steve Jobs. What did you know that one? If you did, you should come and play our game. We'll begin with four players. Three will be eliminated, and one will move on to the final round against the winner of the second half hour. Now we have a game. This is the perfect time to be watching. In the end, only one will remain to play for one million dollars. If you win, you'll be rich. That's it. This is American Know-It-All. Patrick Harris and hosting responsibilities have landed squarely on my shoulders. This game is all about what you know, how fast you know it, and how well you know it under pressure. Let's meet our first four players. From New Albany, Indiana, it's Valerie. Hey, Valerie. Next, from Massapequa, New York, here's Seth. From Chicago, Illinois, please welcome Kate. And also from Chicago, Illinois, here's Tony. Hey guys, welcome to the game. <laughs> so, your goal is to make it through three rounds of gameplay, and at the end of each round, one of you will be eliminated. First round is called five points, second round is called four in a row, and the third round is head to head. The last player standing will earn $10,000, but more importantly, will advance to play against the winner of tonight's second game and a shot at that one million dollars. You all ready? Yes. Ready. Let's play five points. All right, here's how the game works. I'm gonna ask you questions worth one, two, or three points depending on their degree of difficulty. First player to buzz in gets to answer the question. First three to five points will move on to the next round. The one person that doesn't make it, they'll be heading home head low. <laughs> you guys ready? Ready. Yes. Hands on your buzzers, let's get started. Your first question's worth one point. If you're running Windows software and your computer freezes, which three keys should you, Tony? Control, Alt, Delete. Control, Alt, Delete, well done. One point to you, Tony. You're the first to score. Two point question, hands on buzzers. In astrology, which aquatic animal is associated with the sign of cancer? Kate. Crab. Crab is correct. Two points, that puts you in the lead, well done. Tricky one, three point question now. What treaty signed by 137 countries but not the United States seeks to reduce greenhouse Valerie? The Kyoto Protocol. That's correct. Thank you. Well said. Three points to you. Now you're in the lead. Valerie with three, Kate with two, Tony with one, Seth. I'm Seth, coming. you're my man. I'm coming. You gotta do this. I got it. I'm pulling for you on this one. One point. What French phrase is the name of a popular magazine and when translated means, Tony? We? Oui? Not correct, means enjoy your meal. Hey. Bon appétit. Bon appétit is correct. That puts you in the tie for first place with three points. Our next is a two point question. If either Valerie or Kate answer it, they'll be the first to head to four in a row. Hands on buzzers. What famous Puccini opera is set in Japan? Tony. Uh, Madame Butterfly. Correct. Oh. <laughs> for two points, we have a three way tie for first. Valerie, Kate, and Tony with three. Seth, you've yet to score, but this is a three point question. Okay. I'm all about you, Seth. Here we go. Cool. <laughs> of all the internal organs in the body, which is the heaviest? Kate? Liver. Liver, correct. Well done. That means Kate, you're our first person through the four in a row. You're making it through to the next round. Congratulations. Bravo, Kate. All right, who's going to join her? We need two more. This is a two point question. From now on, all the questions will be with two or three points. For two points, your plane departs at 1800 hours. Tony. 6 p.m. Incorrect. Your watch says 2 p.m. How many hours is it until your plane leaves? 
Seth. Four hours. Four hours, correct. You're on the board, sir. All right. Since legalizing gay marriage in 2004, which state has performed Valerie? Massachusetts. Massachusetts is correct. <laughs> and that brings you to five. Well done. You will join lovely Kate to play four in a row. Seth, Tony, All right. pressure's on. It Seth, is. you're with two. Tony, you're with three. This is a three-point question. This one will decide it. Which historic U.S. document contains the phrase, all men are, Seth? Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence is correct. We're making it through to the next round. Congratulations. Well done, sir. Tony, I'm so sorry. But you did well. It's not well enough. Thanks for playing. I hope you had a good time. I did. Thank you. We're off to a great start. Three still in. One million dollars is at stake. The three of you will be advancing into the next round, four in a row, and will be one step closer to the big money and the title American Know-It-All. It's going to be tough. We turn up the pressure when we come back. This is American Know-It-All. I'm still your host. You three players are still in. You're one step closer to a million bucks. One of you has to go. This we call four in a row. All right, here's how it works. Your goal is to answer four questions in a row. Each time you get a question right, you move up. If you miss a question or pass, you drop back down to zero and start again. You only have 40 seconds. Whoever gets the lowest score will be out of said game. Here are your four topics to choose from for tonight. Olympic firsts, land animals, movie villains, and everyday inventions. Kate, since you were the first to get five in a row in our last game, you can choose which topic you would like to play. I'm gonna go with land animals. Land animals, come on over. How are you? I'm very good. I like the little fortune cookie necklace. Oh, thank you. That's cool. You. Where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Nice. What do you do for a living? I work as an assistant at RAND. It's a think tank. A think tank. What a very appropriate yes. occupation <laughs> for the American know-it-all game. Yes, it is. Well, let's see what you know about land animals. You okay. have 40 seconds. Okay. Trying to get four in a row. You ready? Yep. Your time starts now. In the early 1800s, Thomas Jefferson was given a live prairie dog from the West by what two famous explorers? Uh, uh, pass. What, who narrated the Academy Award-winning documentary March of the Penguins? Uh, Morgan Freeman. What comic book superhero fought crime with a German shepherd named Ace? Pass. What is the name of the horse that is famous for being the only survivor of Custer's last stand in 1876? Pass. The American buffalo is also known as what animal? Bison. What 2007 movie features a rat named Remy who learns how to cook? Uh, uh, ratatouille. What ring-tailed animal's name comes from an Indian word meaning he who scratches with his hands? Uh, pass. What member of the cat family is considered the fastest land animal? A cheetah. What? Right on. You got two. That was your highest number. Bravo. Head on back. Two famous explorers given a prairie dog by Thomas Jefferson. Did anyone know? Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark, that's right. Well said. What comic book superhero fought crime with a German shepherd named Ace? Batman. What is the name of the horse that is famous for being the only survivor of Custer's last stand? Comanche. I would never have guessed that. And uh, he who scratches his hands is the Indian word for the animal raccoon. Raccoon. <laughs> but you got two. Valerie. You are next, Olympic firsts, movie villains, everyday inventions. What would be your category choice? Um, none of those grab me, so I'm gonna assume everyday inventions might be things in my life. I'll try that. Come on up. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from New Albany, Indiana. Oh, that's a small town, Small yeah? town, it's a small town outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, fantastic, and yeah. uh, are you married? Uh, I am, I've been married for a year and a half. We got married three months after we met. You were quick to jump into that boat. We knew. You knew right away. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right, well, you chose Everyday Inventions. 40 seconds to get four in a row. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Your time starts now. What adhesive patch was invented by Earl Dixon in the 1920s as an estate? Band-Aid? 
Name the pharmaceuticals company that invented and trademarked the name Viagra in the 1990s. Pfizer. During what decade were airbags invented and first offered as an option in automobiles? 1970s. What well-known doctor is invented his first product in 1903 and named it the Foot Easer? Dr. Scholl. Dr. Scholl is correct. Oh, yeah. this is four in a row. Well done. Hop on over there. Valerie. It's a good thing you wore red, because you are on fire. That was fantastic. All right, Seth. Oh, now you're stressing. <laughs> well, you only have two to choose from, Olympic firsts and movie villains. What is your choice? It's going to have to be movie villains. Come on over. Movie villains. Tell me about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from Massapequa, New York. Fantastic. And what do you do over there? Um, well, I administrate over uh, math teachers. And what we do is we try to get math teachers to teach kids so that they're making sense of the math projects hands on, as opposed to opening to page 32 and sure. memorizing. Nice. Yeah. You're a smart man then. Well, I'd like to think so. We'll find out, right? <laughs> <laughs> You've chosen movie villains. Your time starts now. In what 1960 film does Marion Crane check into a hotel run by Norman Bates? Oh, um, Psycho. In which arm is the villain's hook in the Walt Disney version of Peter Pan? Right. In what 1988 movie does German terrorist Hans Gruber tangle with policeman John McClane, played by Bruce Willis? Uh, uh, Die Hard. In the Stanley Kubrick film 2001 A Space Odyssey, HAL 9000 is the onboard computer of what spaceship? 2001, uh, Hal, um, death. What famous villain began life as Anakin Skywalker? Um, uh, Darth Vader. What is the profession of the character played by Louise Fletcher in the film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Uh, he, uh, nurse. You just missed it under the buzzer. It was nurse. You only got one. Yeah. The spaceship from 2001 A Space Odyssey was the Discovery. And you had a coin toss with the right or left. With right or left. The hook is on his left hand. I'm sorry we're gonna have to say goodbye to you for today, but you made it to round two. Hope you had a good time. Definitely. Right on. Kate versus Valerie will play in our next round. That was amazing. Then there were two. See who's going for the million bucks. They go head to head right after this. Coming up. Valerie and Kate go head to head. Only one will advance. Pass or play. To play against the winner of tonight's second game for a chance at $1 million and the title American Know It All. Hey, welcome back to American Know It All. We started the game with four players. Now we're down to just two. We have Valerie against Kate. The winner of the next round will win $10,000 and have to answer one question to try and parlay that into a million. Let's play head to head. All right, are you ready? Here's how it works. I'm going to ask you a question that contains a series of clues. As time runs down, the question is worth less and less. But listen up, you can only answer when the timer is on your side. Give us a wrong answer, your time will pass to your opponents. This is where knowledge, speed, and strategy all come into play. The first to score nine points goes through to the final. You two set? Yep. Great, let's play. The first category is politics. What do you think, Valerie? I'm gonna pass politics. Pass <laughs> politics over to you, Kate. Okay. <laughs> Kate, politics, your time starts. Now, I am currently one of the most recognized faces in the world, but I was born in Birmingham, Alabama in the 1950s. My name comes from an Italian musical expression that means with sweetness. As a teenager, I studied piano, but I eventually went into politics. I became the first female African-American Secretary of State. Condoleezza? Yes. Condoleezza, Condoleezza Rice. Rice is correct. Two points to you. You are in the lead. The next category is English literature. Kate, pass or play on English literature? Play. Play. Your time starts now. I was written in the 1800s by a woman as a warning against the power-hungry nature of man. For this reason, she subtitled me the modern Prometheus. I tell the story of a mad scientist named Victor who fashions a creature out of old body parts and brings him, yes, Valerie. Frankenstein? Frankenstein is correct, well done. And with that, you move into the lead with three points. We're going to nine. The next category is transportation. 
What do you think? Pass or play on transportation, Valerie? I think I'm going to pass again. Pass transportation. Will it pay off? Kate, your time starts now. As a means of transportation, I was first talked in about in 1529. In the 1800s, the Spanish government thought I might be a good idea. Eventually, the U.S. bought the rights and started digging. In 1914, the first, yes, Valerie. Subway? Incorrect. Time passes to you, Kate. Continuing. I bought the rights and started digging. In 1914, the first ship went through the series of locks that made up my waterway. And from that day to this, it's... Yes, uh, Kate. Shipping? I'm sorry? Uh, shipping? Shipping. Incorrect. Time passes to Valerie. Continuing. That ditch made Panama famous. Valerie. The Panama Canal. The Panama Canal is correct. <laughs> One point for you. These are tough questions. Four points to two. Kate, you're playing catch up. Your category is earth science. You want to pass or play on earth science, Kate? I'm going to pass on this one. Earth science. Pass to Valerie. Valerie, hands on your buzzer. Your time starts now. I am a variety of the mineral known as beryl. I am a rare and valuable gemstone whose distinctive color comes from the trace amounts of chromium. Regarded as, as the traditional birthstone of... Yes, Ruby. Kate. Ruby is not correct. Your time passes to Valerie, continuing. Traditional birthstone of May. I am mined in many countries, including Zimbabwe and Brazil. And in literature, I am the namesake of... Yes, Valerie. Um, Emerald. Emerald is correct. Oh. Wow. <laughs> nice. I'm the namesake of the wizard's green city and the wonderful Wizard of Oz. That sure would have helped. That gives you six points. You're awfully close. $10,000. And you get to choose whether to pass or play. The category is health. Valerie, you can choose whether you want to play or pass on the category health. I have to pass. <laughs> well, interesting, interesting strategy. All right, Kate, your time starts now. I'm a medical procedure that began in 1926 as a risky operation that ultimately ended in tragedy. But I became much more commonplace in the 1980s and 90s as doctors ex Yes, Heart Valerie. transplant? Heart transplant is not correct. Your time passes to Kate, continuing. 80s and 90s as doctors experimented with new technology including ultrasound and laser tipped probes which liquefy fat cells before they remove from the body. Yes, Kate. Liposuction? Liposuction is correct. Two points, good game. Kate, four, Valerie, six. Entertainment is the next category. <laughs> Kate, entertainment, pass or play? I'm gonna pass this one. Entertainment, pass to you, okay. Valerie. Your time starts now, I am a show that began in the 1920s, and in 2002, I celebrated 4,000 consecutive Saturdays on the air. Elvis made a guest appearance, but only once. My longtime home was Ryman Auditorium, and I started on WSM Radio as the WSM Barn Dance. As my popularity increased, so did Nashville's. Today, I am a live show. Valerie. The Grand Old Opry? The Grand Old Opry is correct. Two points. You are very close. So the nine points needed to win $10,000. You're in a pretty powerful position. Kate, you're here with four. But yeah. it's easy to make up points in this game. Yeah. Valerie, you were in a strong position. Your category is landmark. Landmark, Valerie, what do you think? You know stuff about uh, geography, I'm guessing? I, I, a little. Yeah? Pass or play? I'm going to pass. <laughs> you're passing to Kate. All right, here's your big chance. Okay. If you can get this quick, it will be a tie game. Your time starts now. I am one of the most famous buildings in the world. I was built in Europe as a townhouse in the 1700s and was later expanded by architects John Nash and Edward Bloor. Still sometimes referred to as Buck House, my changing of the guard is a major tourist attraction. Valerie. Buckingham Palace? Buckingham Palace is correct! <laughs> So sorry, it's a tough game, but you did really well to make it to head-to-head. -to -head. Thanks so much for playing. We really appreciate you being here. So, Valerie, you're moving on to the final to play against the winner of tonight's second game. Coming up here in just a minute. Why don't you go take a breather, relax for a spell. All right, we got one. We just need one more to play against her to start winning big bucks. Let's meet our next four contestants. Here they are. First in Indio, California, it's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Next, from Brooklyn, New York, here's Kelly. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's Dan. Hi, Dan. From Redlands, California, here's Amy. Welcome, welcome, contestants. Thanks for hanging around. So, guys, you just saw our first game's winner, Valerie, school the competition.
She'll be coming back to compete against one of you at the end of the hour for a chance at one million dollars. But first, to get there, we'll need to outsmart each other. There are three rounds, and one of you will be eliminated at the end of each round. Let's play five points. All right, once again, questions are worth one, two, or three points, depending on their degree of difficulty. First player to get five points wins, hands on buzzers. So here's your first question for one point. The year is 2007, and CEO Steve Jobs is introducing which communication device at the Mac World Expo? Yes, Kelly. iPhone. iPhone is correct. One point. Good for you, first to score. Two point question now. Commonly heard in coffee shops, the Italian word for milk is what? Amy. Oh, leche. Leche is not correct. Dan, Kelly, Jeff, Jeff. Latte? Latte is correct, very good. Two points for you, that puts you in the lead. Fast and furious, next up, three point question. To be elected US president, how many electoral college votes must a candidate receive to win outright? How many votes to win outright? Ah, uh, Jeff, a little late, it was 270. Did you know that one? If you did, you should come and play our game, because that was a hard question. One point question now. What grain does nearly one half of the world's population eat as their, yes, Jeff? Rice. Rice is correct. The next is a two point question. Of the major Jewish holidays, which one is known as the Day of Atonement? Dan. Rosh Hashanah. Incorrect. Kelly? Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is correct, well done. That puts you in a tie for the lead. Three points Jeff, three points Kelly, Dan and Amy get to score. Moving along to a three point question. In the 2002 movie About a Boy, Hugh Grant sang what Roberta Flack song? Remember the movie? The song sung in it? Any guesses? Killing Me Softly. Uh, oh. This is not an easy game, folks. <laughs> One point question now. In April 2008, a construction worker found a baseball jersey buried under Yankee Stadium. Which major league team, yes Jeff? Boston Red Sox. Boston Red Sox is correct. You are one away, sir. Dangerously close to moving on. Two point question, here we go. What war was effectively ended with the surrender at Appomattox Courthouse, Jeff? Civil War. The Civil War is correct. Well done, you're our first player to make it through the next round and play four in a row. Well done, Jeff. All right, one down, three left. What two will make it? It's crunch time right after the break. Don't go anywhere. Hey there, welcome back. I'm Neil Patrick Harris, and if you're wondering what this show is about, the clue is in the title, American Know It All. It's a mental marathon, and for one player, there could be one million dollars. We're in the middle of five points. Kelly has three points. She's in the lead, really just one question away from joining Jeff to play four in a row. Dan, Amy, I'm rooting for you. You can Thanks. do it. Here's your next question. For three points now, the title, Pirates of the Caribbean, contains 21 letters. How many of those are the letter B? Kelly? Two. Two is correct. And that's all you need. Yes, it. You reached the five points. You're joining Jeff for four in a row. Three point question now. Of the US states that border Mexico, which one has the shortest border? Dan? Uh, New Mexico? Incorrect. Amy? California. California's correct. Three points to you. Bravo. Three point question. In advertising, which fast food chain asked the question, where's the beef? Dan. Wendy's. Wendy's, correct. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Three point question, now this will decide it. Hands on buzzers and it's an easy one. Whoever's fastest will get it. In the Pledge of Allegiance, what's the sixth word? Dan. Flag. Flag is correct. <laughs> and you, sir, will be joining the other two in the next round, four in a row. Amy, I'm so sorry, but you didn't quite make it, but thanks for playing the game. I hope you had a good time. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Only one of you will be competing at the end of the hour against Valerie, the first game's winner, for a chance at one million dollars. But first, you have to get through the next round. This we call four in a row. All right, you all ready? 
So guys, new round, new game. But one of you, again, has to go home. Here's how it works. Your goal is to answer four questions in a row. Each time you get a question right, you move up. If you miss a question or pass, you drop back down to zero and start again. You only have 40 seconds. Whoever has the lowest score, out of the game. All right? Here are your four topics to choose from for tonight. Children's toys. The Las Vegas Strip. Vegetarian foods. 20th century American history. Jeff, since you were the first to make it through in five points, what would you like to choose? 20th century American history. Come on up. Hey, Jeff. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an English teacher for uh, at-risk youth. Oh, right. that's a very noble job. Mm -hmm. you're, a, you, you're a smart guy to be on this show. Lots of degrees. <sighs> I'm a smart aleck. Are you? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> 40 seconds on the clock. You have to get four in a row. You ready? Ready. Jeff, your time starts now. What controversial leader did Cuban exiles attempt to overthrow at the Bay of Pigs? Fidel Castro. Before adopting the 26th Amendment, what was the minimum age to vote in U.S. elections? 21. What was the 49th state to join the Union? Alaska. What U.S. president died from gunshot wounds he received at the Pan American Exposition in 1901? Uh, James Garfield. What Wisconsin senator headed the House Committee on Un-American Activities in the mid-1950s? Uh, 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 pass. In 1954, Dr. Jonas Salk developed a vaccine. Polio. In what year? Ooh, nice. You got three. You can head back. House Committee on Un-American Activities, Wisconsin Senator Joseph McCarthy was that one. And uh, the Pan-American Exposition in 1901, which president was that? Either of you know? You know at home? William McKinley. Kelly, you're next. You have children's toys, Las Vegas Strip, and vegetarian foods. What would you like to choose as your category? Uh, I think I will go with children's toys. Great, come on over. How are you? Fine, how are you? Very good. Are you married? I am. My Fantastic. husband's sitting right over there. Oh, awesome. Hey, how are you? Do you have children? Uh, we don't, so I'm still oh, smiling. In <laughs> <laughs> but you've chosen children's toys. Yes, Why something I probably know nothing about. <laughs> that may not have been the wisest decision. Oh, well, we'll find out right now. 40 seconds, four in a row. Are you ready? I'm ready. Kelly, your time starts now. Players use a Gibson guitar-shaped controller for what video game? Guitar Hero. What piece of equipment do you need to participate in a double dutch contest? Jump rope. What is the shortest standard reply on a magic eight ball? Pass. What toy was invented by the son of Frank Lloyd Wright? Pass. What Danish building blocks were named the toy of Lego. the century? What character was the first in the line of Tickle Me plush dolls? Elmo. Kula Hoop was introduced in 1958 by which company? Mattel. Invented by James Wright, what toy is created by mixing silicone oil and boric acid? Play-Doh. What war provided the inspiration for the action figure line G.I. Joe? Oh. World War II was yeah. the answer to that one. You got two right, you're still in the running. <laughs> the shortest standard reply on a Magic 8 ball, yes. Yes, I realized that as soon as I, I passed. I thought it would have been no. Frank Lloyd Wright's son invented Lincoln Logs. Oh. Architecture. Yeah, yeah, I know that, okay. The hula hoop was introduced in 58 by which company? Whammo. Wow. And what toy is created by mixing silicone oil and boric acid? Silly putty. Silly putty, well done, yeah. <laughs> Kelly, you got two, but Dan, you have two categories left. Las Vegas Strip and vegetarian foods. What would you like to choose? Um, vegetarian foods. <laughs> On over. <laughs> Are you nervous? I don't know. I wasn't sure I could go either way with that category. I'm a vegetarian, so maybe that's the right choice. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Take a breath. Take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> and you're good at games? You're... I love games. I play games all the time, and actually so much so a lot of my friends won't even play with me anymore. <laughs> really? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's see what you know about vegetarian foods. You have to get four in a row. You can at least get two. You'll tie with Kelly. If you can get three or four, you'll move on to head-to-head. -to -head. All right. 40 seconds. You ready? Sure. Dan. Your time starts now. In the nursery rhyme, what did little Jack Horner pull out of his Christmas pie? A plum. The original recipe for a Waldorf salad included what fruit? Apple. What Australian snack is made from leftover yeast extracts for making beer? Oh. 
Pass. On what vegetable did ancient Egyptians place their right hand when taking an oath? Apple. What green vegetable is the featured ingredient in eggs Florentine? Uh, lettuce. Taleggio cheese comes from which country? It's Italy. In 1988, Cesar Chavez conducted a 36-day fast to encourage Americans to boycott what fruit? Orange. Hawaiian poi is primarily made of what, what leafy vegetable? Uh, pass. Ah, oh, you got two. <laughs> well done. We'll continue on. This Australian snack made from leftover yeast extracts is Vegemite. I knew it. Vegemite, Vegemite sandwich. It's yeah. Terrible. Ancient Egyptians placed their right hand on an onion oh. when taking an oath. Eggs Florentine is made with spinach. Cesar Chavez conducted a 36-day fast encouraging Americans to boycott grapes. And a Hawaiian poi, primarily made of the leafy vegetable called taro. Mm. Taro. All right. This is interesting. Jeff, you are through to head-to-head. -to -head. Kelly and Dan, you both have two. We're going to go to a tiebreaker question. I'm going to ask you one tiebreaker question. The first person to answer will move on. So it's essentially the fastest person will get it. Are you ready? Yep. Hands on your buzzers. Here is your question. What Pennsylvania town are you in? If you see streets named Chocolate and Cocoa, <laughs> Kelly. Hershey. Hershey is correct. And that means you are moving on to head to head. Well done. Dan, I'm so sorry. She was a bit faster than you. She played a good game, though. Congratulations, though. You had a good time. But Kelly and Jeff, they're playing against each other. One of them will be playing for the title and maybe one million dollars. We'll be back in a couple minutes. If you're watching TiVo, we'll be back in about two and a half seconds. <laughs> Coming up, Jeff and Kelly go head-to-head -head for $10,000. I and my four supporting characters are collectively known as Mystery Inc. Only one will advance to face Valerie. For the winner, there could be $1 million. They are ordinary people with extraordinary smarts. Who will be tonight's American Know-It-All? You know how fast you know it and as we get closer to the final what do you know under pressure with two players both hoping they can make it the winner of the next round will win ten thousand dollars and have to answer one question to try and parlay that into a million let's play head to head okay here's what happens i'm going to ask you a question that contains a series of clues as time runs down, the question is worth less and less. But listen up, you can only answer when the timer is on your side. Give us a wrong answer, your time will pass to your opponents. This is where knowledge, speed, and strategy all come into play. You got the most points in four in a row, so you get to decide whether you want to pass or play. Our category is newsmakers. Newsmakers, what do you think? Play. Jeff? Play on newsmakers. Your time starts now. I was born in Illinois in 1947. Though I once made a living gutting fish, I was later named one of the 100 most powerful lawyers in America. After a flirtatious glance, I met my husband at Yale, and I have sat on the board of Walmart, served as the first lady of Arkansas, and his first, yes, Jeff? Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is correct. Well played. Two points for you. Kelly, no points, but you get to choose. Our category is periodicals. You want to pass or play? I'll play. Periodicals is your category. The time starts now. I'm a monthly magazine that was co-founded in 1922. The Audit Bureau of Circulation says I am the best-selling consumer magazine in the United States. However, my pages are roughly half the size of most American magazines. Yes, Jeff? Reader's Digest? Reader's Digest is correct. Five points to you, sir. We are playing to nine. Our next category is entertainment. You're in the catbird seat, man. You're in the lead and you get to choose whether you want to pass or play. I'm gonna pass. Pass. Entertainment goes to you, Kelly. Okay. Your time starts now. I've starred in a long-running animated TV series which includes my name in the title. I and my four supporting characters are collectively known as Mystery Inc. And we work to solve criminal plots which often have supernatural themes. Jeff. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo is correct. <laughs> Impressive. You gotta get some points here. Well, you get to choose now. Strategy right. can come into play. Food okay. is the next category. 
What do you think? You a foodie? I am. But strategy does come into strategy play. Strategy does come into play here. What do you think? If he gets the clue right away, he wins. I think I need to play this one. Excellent. Your time starts now. I am a food that was introduced during the World's Fair in 1904. These days, Americans eat over 800,000 pounds of me. Yes, Kelly. Hot dogs? Incorrect. Time passes over to you, Jeff. Continuing, every year. Though high in total fat and calories, I am a good source of protein and monosaturated fats. I'm a popular type of snack and sandwich, especially, yes, Kelly. Oh, popular type of snack and sandwich? Ham? <laughs> Incorrect, <laughs> time passes to you, Jeff. Continuing, ago. especially when paired with jelly. I come in brands, including Peter Pan. Yes, Jeff. Peanut, peanut butter. Peanut butter is correct. <laughs> He was unbelievable, super fast. You made it very far though. Thanks so much Thank for playing. We hope you had a good time. But Jeff, you are the man. Well done. $10,000 is yours. You are very close to trying to make that a million. There's just one more challenge standing between him and the money, and that's Valerie, the winner of tonight's first game. Valerie, come back here. Let's keep playing. Welcome back. All right, we both beaten multiple players to get here. Your stats are great. Valerie, you got 84% of your questions wow. right. Well done. Yeah. Jeff, you crushed 91% right. All right, it's a pretty tight game. I like it. So, Jeff and Valerie, you both won $10,000. That's yours to keep. But now, only one question will determine who is moving on to play for the million dollars. We call it the super know-it-all question. First person to buzz in and gets it right, wins, and they will get to play for the big, big, big money. But be careful, if you buzz in and you answer wrong, your opponent gets to hear the whole question, yeah? Big stuff, good luck. This is it for an opportunity at one million dollars. Your category is the 1990s. Here's your super know-it-all question. I am an event that took place in 1995. The fraternity Phi Beta Sigma was one of my co-sponsors. Some of my attendees included Stevie Wonder and Isaac Hayes. I was held in Washington, D.C. as a male-only event that was cons <laughs> Yes, Jeff. The Million Man March? The Million, Million Man, Man March is correct. Well done. I'm so sorry, Valerie, but you do walk away with $10,000. That's yours to keep. Thanks for playing. Jeff, dude, well played. Now it's time to play against the toughest opponent of all, yourself. If you win, you'll be rich. After the break, Jeff plays for $1 million. There's no way you're changing the channel now. Stay tuned. Perfect time to be watching. We're here with Jeff from Indio, California. Jeff, man, you just completed your super know-it-all question against Valerie with Million Man March. Nicely done. Thank you. And now, let's see if you can become a million man yourself. Oh. Here's how you get to the one million dollars. There are just six questions between you and the million. First question is worth $25,000. You'll get six clues from me. Then, as the money gets bigger, the questions will get more difficult. For $50,000, you'll only get five clues. $75,000, you'll get four clues, and so on, right up to the million dollar question. And for that, you'll have to get the answer from just one clue. You can quit anytime you want, but let's try and make it a million. Good luck. Thank Here you. is your $25,000 question and your six clues. Clue one, I was born in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Clue two, I received a degree in accounting from Mississippi State University. Clue three, I am a former politician. Clue four, as a lawyer, 
I heard a case which inspired me to write my first novel. Clue five. I had the top selling book of the year every year from 1993 to 2000. And clue six. I have written the books The Firm and The Pelican Brief, among others. Who am I? I didn't think it was going to come to me. John Grisham. Wow, watching your face work through that was crazy. John Grisham is correct. <laughs> well done. <laughs> you are rattling it in your head. Nice. And that was the easy part. You didn't even have to make any decisions. Now you can take this $25,000 and go home, or you can play for double that. $50,000, I'll give you five clues. Your category would be landmarks. Do you want to keep your money now, or do you want to play forward for $50,000? The difference between 25 and 10? I'm Nuts. gonna go on, I'm there gonna play. You. Let's play. <laughs> landmarks is your category. Clue one. I was ranked fifth on the list of America's favorite architecture by the American Institute of Architects. Clue two. It took over four years to construct me. Clue three. During construction, over two dozen men fell off me. Clue four, I am featured in the movie Vertigo. And your last clue, clue five, I am a landmark that is part of US Highway 101. You seen Vertigo? Yeah. What time ago? am I? The Golden Gate Bridge? Golden Gate Bridge is correct. Yes. Fifty thousand dollars is yours. Nice play. All right. That's good money. It is good money. But I have another question. <laughs> You're tempting. <laughs> Absolutely. You have fifty thousand. Sports is your next category. I would read you four clues. How confident are you in sports? Do you want to stop at fifty or go for seventy-five? thousand dollars. How, how, how well do you know sports? Are you, you, you look uh, fit? Are you a sportsman? I, yeah, there's so much sports. True. Uh, I'm gonna go for it. Nice. With reticence. Let's play. Let's play. Your topic is sports. Here are your four clues. Clue one. I am generally regarded as one of the greatest players in the history of my sport. Clue two, I have won the Masters four times and the US Open once. Clue three, I was born on September 10th, 1929. Your final clue, clue four, I have a popular non-alcoholic drink named after me. For $75,000, who am I? Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer is correct. $75,000. I love it. You're making me laugh. You're so good to watch because you don't know until that last question. You're just struggling your way through them. All right, now we're getting into big money. This is worth $100,000. Your topic, if you choose to play, is organizations. You will only get three clues. But let me tell you this. If <laughs> you go away for $75,000, good for you. If you choose to go for the 100 and you miss, you'll drop back down to 10,000, which isn't great. Would you want to go on for $100,000? You know, it's, it's taken me so many to, to the last clue, and organization sounds scary, so um, I'm going to pass. You I'm going to take the, the money. 75? 75. Uh, Good for you. Well played. You played a great game. $75,000 is yours. Jeff, you are tonight's American know-it-all. You'll be returning next episode for another chance at $1 million. I'm Neil Patrick Harris. Have a smart week. Good night.
If you like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more. And check out my Facebook page for other exciting content.